frosty mornings, wild temperature swings, wind from the north so sharp it takes your breath away. Yep, winter's back. Hi, I'm Lori Johns. This time of year, Iowans take extra measures to care for their families, friends, and animals. It's no different on an Iowa pig farm. But it's not just protection from the elements that matters on the farm, it's protection from what you can't see, like viruses or bacteria. There can also be threats to mama pigs and piglets from other pigs. For those reasons and many more, pig farming has evolved to having most of our pigs raised indoors. It leaves compassionate Iowans with many questions about their veterinary care, nutrition, and living space. So today on Chop Talk, let's get into all of it. We begin with a visit to a modern hog barn in Northwest Iowa. Come along with me inside a fourth generation family owned diversified operation known as Pig Hill Farms. I'm joined by Janae Metzger, who is the manager of Pig Hill up here in beautiful, although it's rainy today, beautiful Northwest Iowa. And as the manager and a longtime pig farmer, well, it's nice to talk to you again. Now, tell me about your journey as manager of this modern hog barn. You've got several employees and you've been doing this a long time, but tell me about it. Well, it definitely started when I was very little. I first recall seeing photos and kind of having slight memories of working with my father in the little nurseries, waking up the pigs, creep feeding, doing those little things. So from early age, I was around pigs and really just learned to like it. Didn't think I was going to pursue a career long term in the swine industry. And I got to college and realized I really missed the pigs. And there was a lot more to agriculture than what I maybe thought. And so found myself in animal science and came back to the farm operation one year after I graduated from college. And I have been learning and growing with the company since. So we started up a brand new sow farm when I returned home. And I have been, like I said, learning along the way. So. We're here today in a totally different role than where I was seven years ago when I came back, but it's been a great journey. Well, and it's evolving. Like you say, the industry is evolving, your farm is evolving, the practices are evolving. Tell me what it was like when you first started versus kind of where we are today. Well, even for starting, you have that background of experience, which was somewhat limited, but you had it as well as the education. And so that was a great background, I think, for me. But then to actually apply it, in the farm to the animals working with the people was a whole nother ball game and so i would just say seeing how our practices um, have changed in the last seven years not even dramatically but just little things along the way different veterinarians we've worked with other things like that have brought new perspectives to my experiences and so i can then use that today to train my team members and my employees based on my experience and so therefore i feel we don't lose sort of any sort of training or experiences because I can say here's the platform of which I have there's your background your information and together I feel like we're very strong with our education and our information. Well tell me where we are today when it comes to specifically the care of well sows but mama pigs as far as everybody else is concerned so long before the babies are born you know it's so important that care is taken place and for people listening they probably don't realize like many hog barns biosecurity is job number one and again you have to shower in and do you do you shower out you, you know it's just i mean everything yeah uh, it's a whole it's a process it's and a you're thing. very right when you said it that's number one every day and it's something that we do every day that i almost don't think about it but it is so important um from the moment that we walk through that door there are several steps we take to even enter into the farm because you're right we want to be very clean and we don't want to bring anything from the outside in because the moment we bring a new disease a virus uh, something to these animals you know they're challenged and right. that increases then our need for their care which that's why we're here right but the challenge gets bigger if yeah. you bring other problems in so yeah you start with cleanliness whether it's us every day whether it's the supplies we bring in the food we eat there is a process to everything to keep it clean it's right. all good and and the pigs deserve it that's right yeah. absolutely they do so now tell me about housing too so before they're born before the pigs are born 
tell me about space. I know that's a topic of conversation around the country right now, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. Where are we sitting right now? So this farm actually is designed with large pen gestation, which is somewhat unique to the industry. Not every farm would embrace something like this, and I think that's acceptable. Every farm can choose what is best, what they feel is best for their animals. Um, in this environment, we have about 300 animals in the pen, but they have right about 19 to 20 square feet per sow. And so in the winter time, <laughs> there's so much pen space because they all like to be cozy and warm with each other. Yeah. They have their little bedrooms, their little nooks, and they cozy in with their friends and that pen is wide open. In the summertime when it's hot, because it gets hot in here in Iowa, mm -hmm. they're spread out. And even still, even though they're spread out, trying to get, you know, their space, Exactly. And it comes down to pig behavior. And that was interesting when you talked about, uh, you know, on a winter day, they like to cozy up, even though there's the whole floor space for them to go and wander and do what they want at their own free will. They like to cuddle up. And I'm, I'm thinking of my chihuahua, you know, when the snow's <laughs> out there, he like comes up on the couch and sits right next to me. I'm like, hey, what's going Still on? Still have a bubble. You're invading my space here. But you know, if he's chilly, he's going to cuddle up. And yeah. so the, the big They do the are, same. That's wild. They really do. You would yeah. think otherwise but well that gets at the heart of it too so then when the pigs are born when the babies are born then is that more space as well on the farm that I grew up on and this was kicking it old school just so you know Janae <laughs> but um, you know there there were some crushing incidents because we didn't have it wasn't a modern facility at all and sometimes the mama would try to get up and turn around and she'd just lay down and you'd hear it and it was too late mm -hmm. to get the piglet and mm -hmm. you lose it yeah, you're not wrong, and that still happens today, mm -hmm. but we do actually have a larger pen and creep area for our piglets to be raised in than where we were on our original sow farm. Oh. So when we built this, we said it's the next generation. We want to you know, embrace that new technology, embrace those new ideas, and so we actually gave the sow um, more space because she's a lot longer these days, and so we gave her sufficient length, and then we actually gave some width so that the pigs have more area. So the thought was to reduce those crushing incidences. And I would say our data would say that is that is true. And we can actually raise more pigs in this farrowing pen today than where we could 10 years ago on our old farm. We would say an average litter has 16 born to it. Of that, we want over 90% of them born alive. So okay. that's 14, well above 14, 14 and a half, almost 15. And we would see that quite often, a lot of 15, 16 plus litters. Actually, last week we had one of 23. Well, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, she so, gets a gold star. Yeah, she what sure in does. The world? <laughs> How much do they eat? You know? So through their different stages, they actually have rations um, or their feed that is specific for that stage. So if they're in the, a growing stage of life, they have different nutrition needs based on their age and based on their gut development. And um, so we have that. And then once they're in the actual like breeding area and they're ready for the reproduction, they're fed another ration for something specific for that need when they're pregnant and gestating there's a ration for that right. and then once they're in the farrowing barn and they're in the maternity area they have their babies and they're lactating there's a ration for that so we work with some great experts um, and nutritionists who actually know our genetics specifically and know how to feed the sow specific to like our because each genetic is a little bit different genetic no line yeah and wow. so we actually have a nutritionist who's very specific to these genetics and he helps with formulation of these diets and then wow. he's working um one-on-one -on -one with another nutritionist and together they tag team and yeah i mean we're very um specific to the needs of our sows especially when it comes to nutrition now how many people do you employ on this farm on an everyday basis there's about 15 people okay um and then we have a additional person who actually only worries about biosecurity so oh, wow. they are 100 yeah. percent making sure that the way people are entering that the entryways disinfected that's a you know the feed is brought in properly so they are focused solely on this site and the biosecurity of the site. And then we have another individual who works at night and they actually take care of our maternity area in the nighttime. So those would be a few additional positions that wow. maybe aren't here like day to day in pig world, sure. but they do affect our farm. So when it comes to training them to make sure everybody's doing the right thing by that pig, mm -hmm. how, how, how does that how does process? That, yeah. yeah. So when somebody comes online, we actually onboard them for a period of time, whether that's eight to 10 weeks usually. And most of that is paired up one-on-one -on -one with somebody who is a native um, speaker of their language, okay. their home language. And so that helps a lot with the training process. And so you always have 
I mean, once you make your investment in the first person and it's, you know, a, oh, the ball rolls in the right direction, right. it's beautiful. So really we just started, we're training one person, or like I said, taking their experiences and my experiences, blending them together, working side by side. And pretty soon it's like, you've now transferred in a sense, your knowledge and experiences right. to them. And then they, they now train the next person. And all of a sudden you have two people trained and then also you have three. So yeah. it's a duplicate effect and it's, it's really great. So now when somebody new comes on, we just pair them up with the right personality, the right person for a couple months. And um, between them, our veterinarian, our other on-farm managers and trainees, yeah, we're, that's kind of how that works here. Making sure everyone does right by those sows is part of the success or failure of pig farms today. Knowledge is perpetual, and it comes from many sources. People like Dr. Kara Hayden, known around the country for her work in animal welfare. I caught up with Dr. Hayden while she was speaking to the next generation of veterinarians at Iowa State University. Although she's young, her interest in training others started years ago. Absolutely. So I grew up on a pig farm. So um, I had the unique opportunity of watching my dad raise pigs and see how that impacted the people who worked for my dad, how it impacted the pigs, how it impacted our community, and how he was just incredibly passionate about what he did and that he wanted to provide good jobs, take care of the environment, and feed the world. And so I have always grown up realizing that farmers are so important. And so I think when I started seeing some of the villainization of the farmer that was occurring, I found that to be very frustrating because that just hasn't been my experience. And so I found myself in a unique position, having grown up on a farm and then now being a veterinarian that works with a ton of pig farmers, I'm just in a great spot to be able to advocate and share what happens on pig farms. Well, you're right. There is a lot of information, a lot of misinformation out there. And we all know uh, Dr. Google. That's where people go so many times to get their answers about farming today. And that can be frustrating. And, and I think that's great that you're taking it head on. There, have, there is a lot of information, particularly about uh, sow health, about the mama pigs, how they live their lives, uh, their environment, that type of thing. What do you think is the biggest myth out there about that? I mean, I hear stuff all the time about how Pig farmers don't care for their pigs, which I think is absurd. So the people that I work with, they are on these farms because they love pigs and they care very deeply. I personally am someone who loves working with pigs. I think they're a really cool animal. I think they're fun to work with. And that's that's why I love my job. Exactly. <laughs> and I work with a lot of people like that who very deeply care about pigs. That's right. Well, it's a big job that you have. And things are evolving all the time. Um, and here we are at Iowa State with the students walking around, and they're learning that next generation of knowledge as well, which is so important. It's a, it's a, a job that is so important, taking care of mama pigs, and that information evolves all the time. Yeah, I mean, taking care of mama pigs is basically the foundation of what we do at South Farms. And so what we teach our caregivers is that what you say and what you think matters. It matters to the pig, it matters to the people around you, and it matters to the world. And so they know that their fundamental job at the core is to truly care for the pigs that are at their farm. Yeah, compassion is the center, isn't it? It absolutely is. So we have to be compassionate in order to appropriately care for our pigs. Tell me how that compassion and that type of care and that attention to detail, even the emotive side of it, does impact sow health. Yeah, so we do something that we call daily observations. And so it is our expectation that every caregiver looks at every pig. So every pig every day gets looked at. Did that pig eat? Did that pig drink? Is that pig coughing? Is that mama sow about ready to have her litter? Is she lame? We make sure that we stand pigs up every day to look at her feet and legs. Is she healthy? Is she getting beat up? Is she getting enough food? Those are observations at the core that our caregivers are doing every single day for every single sow in their care. That's right, and that impacts you now how other pigs react with each other and how they're reacting with their caretakers. So that is important, isn't it, to take a look at them and go, how are they looking today? Yeah, absolutely. How are they looking? And then when I go through and do my welfare assessments, I'm looking at the interactions between pig and caregiver. So our goal is that our pigs would build trust, Mm -hmm. that they would understand that their caregivers are there to give them care and to meet their needs. And so they would respond to their caregivers as, I trust what's going on and I trust that you're going to provide for me. And so when when I look at pig to people interactions, I can see that. 
I can see that those pigs trust their caregivers. That's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. Well, tell me how, uh, when it comes to the environment, of uh, how they live their lives, the space that they live their lives in, and, and the food and that type of thing has evolved over the years. Well, especially since you grew up on a farm. Absolutely. So when I grew up, it was very new to start raising pigs inside. So my dad was one of the first guys in Michigan that was building barns to raise pigs inside. And wow. so that was a very fundamental change. Um, and it's different, right? We see cows out on pasture, we don't see pigs on pasture, and mm -hmm. that's hard for people, but pigs are a different animal. So pigs are pretty susceptible to diseases that travel in the air. So we like to keep them inside so we can keep them healthy. Uh, pigs are also not the best at surviving in the winter time and the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so by keeping them inside, we can control the environment and make sure that that temperature is right for them. And so there's a lot of reasons why we've moved pigs inside, and ultimately we think we can care for them better. Right. So how about once they are pregnant? I know things have changed with pigs as they've evolved over the years, you know, the size of the litters and, and the types of feed or that type of thing. Um, tell me about that. Let's uh, maybe just even the space that they have. Yeah, so our pigs, um, I mean, when I was growing up, we used to be really excited to have litters of like nine to 10, and now yeah. we're having averages of 16 and a half and 17 babies. So, I mean, these sows are holding a lot of babies. And so we know the things that they need during pregnancy. So they need peace and quiet. They need to be able to stand up and get the right amount of food and water every single day. They need certain vaccines to mm -hmm. keep them healthy. And those are all things that we can provide during that pregnancy period, irregardless of the housing. So so I work with clients who have houses in stalls and in pens. Pens can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to care for those needs. Um, honestly, it, it's a lot more difficult in yeah. some cases to care for those needs, but we feel confident that in any, in any type of housing, our caregivers are up to the task of caring for their pigs. Absolutely, and I did notice too, and for people who haven't been on a, on a you know, modern pig farm at all, um, even when they have the bigger pens, uh, they tend to group together. They're hanging together. They got their group. They got their posse. Absolutely. Sows are so interesting. So even though there's no wolves, there's nothing in the barn that's going to eat them, they still are at heart. They're a prey species, and mm. they are looking for something to eat them. And yeah. so they feel very, very comfortable. If, if you look at sows, they want to be grouped together in their group for safety. They like to lay up against gates. Um, I have some pens that have like stalls inside the pens. Those are always full. Mm. Those girls really like to feel that protection of bars around them because at heart, you know, they're looking for that wolf to come eat them. And so they like to feel safe. This, the second thing about pigs is that they're a hierarchy species. Mm. So very different from some of the other um, food animals is pigs. If you have pigs in a group, there is a top dog and there is a bottom dog or a bottom pig. Bottom pig, <laughs> there's a bottom pig and it's, there and it's a vocal a one. Bottom pig, yep. And so we need to make sure that we're protecting that bottom pig, especially in our group housing, uh, along with kind of the boss sow. That's right, because people don't realize too, it's sometimes, uh, I mean, they'll even chew on each other's ear or something you know they, they there's the one they pick on absolutely pigs are very very interactive and they look for again they look for the one that's weak sick lame and they kind of beat her up or mm. if she's skinny because again out in the wild she would be the one who would be putting them at risk of right. predation and so that still hasn't left our pigs even though they're safe inside our barns they still carry that with them from from years and years of, of evolution the guys that I work with, the women that I work with, it is so fun to raise healthy pigs and it is miserable to raise sick pigs. Mm. And so we do a lot to keep our pigs healthy. So I talked a little bit about raising pigs inside. We actually filter the air at our pig barns to make sure that our sows are gonna stay healthy. We put like essential oils and medium chain fatty acids in the feed to make sure that we don't bring any diseases in on the feed. We shower in and out of the facility to make sure that we don't bring diseases to our pigs. We use vaccines. I mean, the focus of my work as a veterinarian is on prevention right. because it is fun to raise healthy pigs and it is miserable to raise sick pigs. I mean, when you see what's happening with bird flu at some of the farms, I, I, you know, there are things globally that, you know, you, you're always on the lookout for sow health, aren't you? Absolutely. African swine fever is a disease that has killed millions of pigs mm. worldwide. And that is, I mean, just a really big deal from a food supply perspective, from a welfare perspective. And so we in the United States are, we are dead set on keeping that virus out of our country and keeping our pigs healthy. Well, that's why when you see you'll drive by, you might know there's a pig farm there, but you can't just walk in, hey, I'm here to go take a look at the pigs and tell them why. 
Yeah, that's so hard for people because it's behind closed doors. I get that. You don't know if there's something horrible happening behind those closed doors. I can tell you from my experience, they're not. Mm -hmm. Um, But we keep those pigs inside because, again, we want to protect them from disease. We want to protect them from the elements. Um, We want to keep them safe. And so we can do that and we can care for them best inside. Has the food evolved over the years, too, for today's sow? I don't know how many calories they need a day to grow all those babies. Yeah, sows eat crazy amounts of feed. So we have some sows, when they're lactating 12 to 14 babies, I have seen farms that sows are eating 28 pounds of feed a day. Each Just sow is? a crazy amount of feed, yes. Wow. <laughs> yep, so she has an ad-lib feeder where there's basically a little bar that she can play with. She knocks the feed down with her nose, and so she has fresh feed available all day long, and those girls will eat. Wow, wow. So tell me, too, last thing, too, about keeping them healthy. Once they're pregnant, do they have to get vaccinations or they're, how does that change? Does yeah, that absolutely. Change? So we vaccinate the sows to keep them, them healthy. And we also give them some vaccines that directly transfer immunity to their piglets. So we give some vaccines just before sows farrow so that that colostrum or that first milk will help protect their piglets and keep their piglets healthy as well. So then if they get to the point of the end of their production cycle uh, and they go off to market, none of that is impacted in the meat, right? Absolutely. So we are really careful. We follow withdrawal periods. So anytime a vaccine is given, a medication, an anti-inflammatory, an antibiotic, whatever it is, we make sure that we follow that withdrawal period, which is the amount of time before any of those things are out of the system or at a low enough level that it's safe to consume that pork. So we double check everything before it goes on a market truck because we care very deeply about food safety. The people who are going to eat the pork are our friends and family, our communities. And so we want that to be safe pork. Right. And that's the law. Absolutely. It is. (laughs) So what do you think is the future on Iowa farms? I mean, we raise more pigs than any other state in the nation. Yeah. Uh, and, And we do it better, I say, than any place else. But what do you think is the future? I think the future is technology. Mm. We have some really cool technology that we already use to control air quality, when the heaters come on and off, controlling the barns. We're starting to have handhelds where all of our caregivers carry around these little devices and they can tell you, hey, this girl needs a vaccine today. Hey, this girl had a treatment yesterday. She needs a follow-up treatment today. Or you need to look at this sow. So we're getting some really cool technology. We're also getting some really cool camera technology. Mm. So another thing, again, about sows going back to evolution, they like to hide the fact that they're sick for as long as possible because they don't want the wolf to eat them. Right, right. (laughs) And so that can mean it's really difficult sometimes for our caregivers to know if a pig is sick. But camera technology is helping us where we can identify that earlier on a camera than even a really good, well-equipped caregiver can. So the future of animal welfare is really exciting with some of this technology. Well, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. And I know you are a, a woman in demand. And once someone sits down and talks with you, they know exactly why. We appreciate your expertise and your talents and your time and certainly your dedication to Iowa pig farming. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Iowa raises more pigs than any other state in the nation. So, of course, it matters to people, pigs, and our economy how every animal is treated. Now, on the next Chop Talk, did you know one of the most popular search topics this time of year is diet? Well, it matters to people, not just because we've overindulged at holiday gatherings. It also matters to pigs year-round, impacting everything from pig health to the taste of pork. I'm Lori Johns. Don't miss a culinary feast fit for pigs on the next Chop Talk.